Hi, this is lesson number 9 on probability from actuarialpath.com. In this lesson, we study random variables. Okay, let me start with an example. Suppose you have an experiment, and your experiment involves tossing a coin, or a fair coin, three times. One after the other. In this case, what does your sample space include? Your sample space in this experiment would include the points, heads, heads, heads. Heads on the first toss, heads on the next toss, and heads on the last toss. Or maybe heads, heads, and tails. Heads, tails, heads. Tails, heads, heads. Heads, tails, and tails. Um, tails, heads, and tails. Tails, tails, and heads. And finally, tails, tails, tails. So you have eight points in the sample space. One, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. Now, what a random variable does is it assigns a numerical value to every point in your sample space. So let me consider a random variable x. Suppose the random variable x is the number of tails of the three that you toss. Okay, So you could have, for instance, zero number of tails. That h, h, h has zero number of tails. Or maybe you would have one tails. Or maybe two tails. Or maybe three tails. So that's a real line. And you can map, for example, heads, heads, and heads to the point zero on this real number line. Okay. Likewise, you could map heads, heads, and tails. You have one tail at that sample point. So you can map that to the point one. Heads, tails, heads can be mapped again to the point one. Tails, heads, heads again can be mapped to the point one. Heads, tails, tails. Now in that case you have two tails. Heads, tails, tails. That could be mapped to the point two on the real number line. Again, tails, heads, tails can be mapped to the point two. Tails, tails, heads can be mapped to this point two. And finally, the point T, T, T in your sample space can be mapped to the number three. So what we have here is the random variable x as a mapping from the sample space to the real number line. So a mapping from the sample space to the real number line for any omega inside the sample space S. So omega could be heads, heads, and heads, 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 and tails. So any point in your sample space can be mapped from the sample space to the real number line. Okay. Therefore, now I can give you the definition of a random variable, which is a mapping from the sample space to the real number line. Or, in other words, a random variable assigns a numerical value to each outcome in your sample space. Therefore, x is a function from the sample space to the real number line. For example, if you take heads, heads, and heads into the function x, your outcome is going to be the number of tails in the sequence of three heads, that would be a zero. Or maybe another point you can take is tails, tails, and heads, and then put it in the function x, then you get two. Notation-wise, we use uppercase letters, okay, uppercase letters, like x, capital Y, capital Z, U, M, and so on, to denote random variables. And we also use lowercase letters, like little x, little y, little z, U, to denote realizations of random variables. Now, what do I mean by realizations of a random variable? In this example, for instance, heads, heads, and heads. You toss three heads in a row. That means you realized 
a value of 0 for the random variable x. Tails, heads and tails. You realize 2 tails or a value of 2 for the random variable x. Let me draw a table showing the distribution of the random variable x. So for a realization of this random variable x, x could take values 0, 0 is one realization, 1 could be the rea realization of the random variable, or 2 could be the realization of the random variable, or maybe 3 could be the realization of the random variable x. And I want to find the probability that the random variable, capital X, takes a realization of little x takes a value of x. What is the probability that you realize a value equal to 0 for this random variable x, which is the number of tails? And you have 8 points in your sample space. And of those 8, one of them could give you a value of 0 for the random variable x. So the probability of x equal to 0 is 1 over 8 that is equal to the probability of capital X equals to zero. And the probability that capital X takes a value of one is how many of these points in your sample space are mapped to the point one? So I have one, two, three, those are in blue. Three out of eight are mapped to the point one. Likewise, the probability of the random variable X taking a realization of two is the number of points in the sample space which are mapped to the value of 2 and those are 3 points 3 of the 8 and the probability that capital X takes a value equal to 3 is only one point in your sample space is mapped to the number 3 so that's 1 point out of 8 1 over 8 and the example we just looked at the random variable x takes the value of 0, 1, 2, or 3. And those are countable number of values. And it's not always the case that a random variable takes a countable number of values. It could take, for instance, any value in a continuous interval. So based on the values that the random variable could take, we have two categories of random variables based on what they can take. If the random variable takes countable number of values, we call it a discrete random variable. If the random variable takes any value in a continuous interval, we call it a continuous random variable. Okay. An example of a discrete random variable is the example we just looked at, where we have 0, 1, 2, and 3 as possible values of the random variable. Or maybe another example is the number of chapters in a book. Your book could have 5 chapters, maybe 10, maybe 15, maybe 25, maybe 14, but I'm not sure if you can have a book with 1.75 chapters or 5.555 chapters. So it has to take discrete points on the real number line. And in that case, we call that random variable a discrete random variable. So a discrete random variable takes countable number of values. On the other hand, a continuous random variable can take any value in an interval. Takes values in a continuous interval. An example, maybe the time required to finish 100 meters run. 100 meters run. If you're a professional and maybe you're very good at it, you may finish it in 10 seconds. Or maybe 9.9996 seconds. Or maybe your time to finish 100 meters could be between 15 seconds and 
30 seconds. You give yourself, maybe I can finish between 15 and 30 seconds. It could be 16.777, 17.154, and so on. Any value in that interval. Maybe another example is the weight of an adult male. It could be 220 pounds. If you like your weights in kilograms, maybe it could be 76.75 kilograms 76.777 kilograms or maybe you can say you, you don't I don't really know what what my weight is but I think it's between 70 kilograms and 85 kilograms in the next lecture we will learn about the distribution of this random variables how could we express the distribution of this random variables